Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hexen, Death Kings of the Dark Citadel. Today we're going to be playing through Hub 3, Knave. So Hub 3 is interesting. Uh, there is two suits of armor here. There is going to be five suits of armor with enemies inside this level. And I'm saying that now because the moment I attack, everything gets a little bit loud. So I'm just going to take this nice and slow, as uh, there is a lot of carnage going on. <laughs> behind these doors. When you open one, it opens both. And we're gonna hang out here for a while. Uh, just slowly but surely killing lizards, because the moment we leave this little room, the doors are going to close behind us and we'll be stuck inside that room instead. And that room's interesting, because it has a whole bunch of pools of water. And if an enemy touches one of those pools, it will then, after an amount of time teleport to a different pool in that same room and if you happen to be standing inside the pool with the enemy inside it you'll get telefragged and die so we're playing this nice and carefully there is a lot of enemies here <laughs> and you might have just noticed that lizard just appear out of nowhere it doesn't teleport with a sound which is probably fortunate but at the same time uh, the first time you go through this, you're going to be a little lost in many ways, really, because there's a lot of not obvious stuff going on in this level, uh, which we'll get to. But first, we're just going to clean up this area because there is a lot. There, there is uh, <laughs> there is a lot of enemies to deal with, and I just don't want to be touching any of this water here. Running all the way to the other side of the room because, again, I just uh, want to play this as safe as possible and also kind of give you an idea of what's going on. There is a bunch of horsemen in this level as well. And, uh, yeah, it's just a great time. The reason, What I'm meaning with uh, trying to tell you what's going on, because that might not be obvious, there is four of these walls with the, the Heresiarch, I think, on it. Uh, there's one over here. There's one over here as well, and then there is a couple. This is a really confusing battle. Then there's one over here, and a little further ahead over here as well. And the way to open these, because you do need to open them to progress, is by destroying the stained glass windows that are on the side here and there and everywhere. Each one of them basically has a horse behind it that's going to be shooting you after destroying the glass. It's tedious, it's evil, and there is a lot of healing items waiting for us as well, so that's at least something. But we're going to just slowly take care of everything. Enemies will probably respawn soon, but that's just a fact of life, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to deal with that when we can. Let's see if I can do two at the same time instead. It does make the auto-aim a little more awkward, unfortunately, but overall manageable. So after destroying four of these, I want to say it's four, it might be three, it opens one of the, the things. We do actually need to destroy all of them, so we're just going to get that out of the way. Uh, I say this is not so obvious because, well, it's not. <laughs> You're not going to guess that destroying stained glass is going to open a door, but it do. Yeah, it do, and it's, and it's unfortunate. Fortunately, there is a lot of health behind it, but every time I touch one of those pools of water, there's a very real chance of just sudden death, which is uh, a little more awkward. It's very... it's so loud. I'm playing this with fairly reduced volume on my side, but hopefully you'll get to enjoy all of it, because quite frankly, it's the real experience of what this absolute nightmare of a place is. There's a button here now, so that's good. It's because we destroyed an amount of stained glass windows. It is always the same amount that opens the same doors, uh, but it... <laughs> I suppose the amount is more or less irrelevant. You just gotta know that you gotta destroy all of them. Or maybe you can get away with some fancy schmancy um, boots of speed usage here and there. But all in all, you might as well just try to destroy all of them and not worry about how many you've destroyed at any point, because it does... Uh... Well, actually, I guess you don't need to destroy all of them. Uh, but we'll get to why that is the case a little bit later. Because we're going for all kills, we do need to destroy all of them, so that's exactly what we're going to do. The goal of this hub, there's a couple. Uh, there is gears that we have to collect to place into things. Uh, there is the little key things that we have to place inside the walls, like the one that's missing over here. There's also a crater of might over there. 
that's really the main thing. Once we've placed all three of the keys in the correct locations, the door to the final area will open. And we can uh, leave after that, so that's nice. I'm just going to make sure I've actually destroyed all of them, but I think I actually have, yeah. Nice. Uh, that means we can push this button over here. That'll make a staircase in an area you can't currently see yet. But this will make that staircase accessible right here. I'm also just going to destroy this so I don't forget about it. Because I was planning to forget about it, and I shouldn't. But slowly but surely, we're clearing out the best room. One of my maybe least favorite things about this whole thing is that the mages are just continuously just going wild. <laughs> and honestly, there is no need. There is no need for them to go as wild as they are the entire time. But it does make the area rather loud. There is a icon of the defender here, so we will be using that a little bit later. We'll get to wine. It's mostly for silly reasons, but it's still a fun time. And now that we have done that, there is some portals here that we can enter. But we're taking the portals in a very specific order because it makes the flow of the hub a little bit better. So now we are going to destroy these two knight statues. One of them has an enemy inside it. And then one more after we press some more buttons. This should lower the door, I believe, and indeed, as you can see, there is currently not a staircase behind these Ettons. I say as you can see as if there's not a pile of Ettons currently in front of me, but this part, as you can see, does not presently have stairs. So now, let's create those. Uh, let's destroy this final knight statue here with the enemy inside it. And before you know it, Everything's nice and quiet. All the enemies are gone. And we can proce pro process and continue is a hard word to say at the same time. We can continue with the level. And that is that. Now there's a little bit more that we can still do here. Uh, there is two more areas I haven't entered yet. That's for secret level purposes. We'll get to that when we get to that for now. We're taking the top right portal. Onwards to the Chantry where there is a lot of lizards. I should probably use the sword for this, but honestly, this works well enough. Uh, let's just deal with all the lizards here. There is a Crater of Might right there, but it's a little trapped, and I think the trap looks cool, so we're gonna take some time to actually show it off. There is a bunch of Afrits inside this pit as well, and I'm hoping to wake those up. And also, there is a whole bunch of mushrooms here that are guarding a shield that's very fiddly to pick up if you don't destroy all of them, so let's just do that. Moving a little bit on ahead, there is, I think, five things with enemies, but we'll get to that uh, first. Let's grab this, and when you do, a whole bunch of stuff explodes. I took a bit more damage than I thought I would, and the entire fountain fills with lava. Ah, I just think it's a neat looking effect, and I appreciate it for what it is. It's nice. Now, what we have to do in this level is go into that room. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult if you don't keep any enemies alive. You can wait for an Etten to spawn and just jump on top of him and into the window there, and you can uh, do things a little bit out of order, and that's kind of nice. But let us first go in here. There is, I think there's five pots or something like that that have these Afrits inside them. And I'm just going to very carefully go in here. Uh, we're going to select our trusty flechettes, and we're just going to do something a little bit like this. There is a certain enemy down there. <laughs> Take my word for it. There is some cow switches that we can pull to make some cool holes in the ceiling. We have to pull all five cow switches. Four of them, in fact. Not five. Don't listen to that sound. It's irrelevant. And there is another one over here. I don't know if there's an enemy inside here. There is an enemy inside a pot that's like on the other side, like right there. I wonder if I can get it from here. Yeah, there you go. There's an Afrit right there, but we have to pull this cow switch. Uh, as you may have heard, the Heresiarch is inside this room. Uh, hopefully without cubes and indeed... No, he's got the cubes, so we're just going to ignore him entirely and pull some more of these cow switches because we cannot presently do anything to him. Pull one more. And now this should have the door be openable. There is a bunch of more wizards, but we can deal with that just fine. 
Uh, currently, I was going to say that the Heresiarch was damageable, but unfortunately not anymore. Behind this door, there is a clock gear, uh, which we have to collect in order to progress further into the level. The clock gear is waiting for us over here. So we'll just grab that. And there is a thingy over there, which we'll collect in a little bit for the completion of the hub. But with the clock gear, we can go back. There's the Eresiarch apparently infighting with someone, which is rare. Because usually the Eresiarch doesn't really infight with most of anyone. So that's <laughs> kind of surprising. We can't currently really do anything to him, though. So I'm just trying to push him out of the way so we can leave. Uh, we can kind of skip a bit, a little bit here and there. But let's just not. Let's just take the regular path. Uh, there is some Afrits right now that have probably arrived from the pit. We could have jumped on top of them to just jump in here. We could have jumped from here because this is the room where the Heresiarch actually is. And you can do a little fiddly jump to get in there, but let's just pretend that that is not an option. When you push that switch, the elevator is going to go up, and then after a little bit it is going to go down again. And after that it's going to go up again, and then I think it just stays up from that point. Uh, which is odd, but it's fair. Pull this to get back into the main hub level. We put the clock gear in and it'll say a door has opened at the Chantry, which is the level where we just were. So we're gonna go back there. Uh, enemies have respawned. But the door that has opened allows us to actually continue in this level. There's a chance that there is currently an enemy we cannot kill. Uh, most levels you can kill all of the enemies without flight, but this is the one exception because there is an area that you can only reach with flight that has an enemy inside it. Hey, he died! That's actually pretty quick. I wonder how much infighting he was actually doing. Because, like I said, it's fairly rare that you can see the Heresiarch infight with anyone, and... Well, he died really quickly, so I'm actually fully okay with that, because we mostly just ignored him for the most part, and I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, there is... Uh, you can jump over there, but it's all... There's a bunch of walls. It's very fiddly to actually jump past all of that. Just making sure we destroyed all the pots, but I think we did. But after putting the clock gear in the thing, we can now push this button. To open the door that's right here. I think there's three pots with enemies inside it. And indeed there are, so we are pretty much good to go on the killing all enemies front, so that's nice. Going over here, pressing this button, will open up the door to the one room you could do a fiddly jump to. And behind that door, after we clear these Ettons, there is a switch. The switch is a little bit hidden. Um, in kind of a strange way as well. I hope you can hear that ambulance in the background. That's a nice little addition. So, if you jump up here, uh, nothing will happen. What you're meant to do is take the stairs. If you take the stairs, then the button will appear, and if you press the button, a portal appears, but it also makes a little staircase. It opens up the item that you have to grab. And once you grab it, a crusher is going to come down, so you have to be at least a little bit careful. And we are missing one enemy. There's a very real chance it's currently inaccessible. So, we're gonna go take this teleporter to the next level of this hub, which is the abattoir. Um, this would be also on the right side of the main hub, but it would be the other, per the other portal that you can access. From the get-go, there is a hidden wall behind you with some quartz flasks. They can be fairly useful. Once again, the goal is to grab the clock gear this one is waiting for you right there. We could probably jump on an Afrit to get it. I'm a little tempted to try, but it is very awkward, and he's gone all the way up as well, so... I'm very quickly giving up on this idea because I can't really be bothered. But you could probably just jump on him, but if not, you have some other options. First, though, let's open up this blinking wall. There is some wizards behind it, and... When you go on top of this elevator, you can see an area that you reach a little bit later. But there's also a couple of wizards here that are just a little bit easier to kill from this angle. So it's just nice to get those out of the way. From here, in order to get the clock gear, we have to go down here. Uh, you'll hear a reaver in the background. You shouldn't worry too much about it, but you should be at least a little aware of it. Uh, because it's going to be up there if you wait long enough little bit scary, but if you are aware of it, then usually no problem at all. Deal with the stalkers. 
And let's move on. This level's kind of dark. There is a lot of dark levels in this hub, which is unfortunate. Take the teleporter and it instantly takes you to the clock gear. And now we no longer have to worry about anything else here. And instead, we're going to take the portal back to the main hub. Put the clock gear in and we're going to move on. Because it says it has built a bridge in the abattoir. It's this one right here. Uh, we're just going to mostly ignore that for now. There's some bars here. They're going to open up in a little bit. There is also a locked door here. That is going to open in a little bit. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to enter this door on the left. It is this optional, but it's there. There is a free dark servant. However, if you destroy all of the corpses in this room, it will have a little bit extra. It'll say, you dare plunder the tomb of the executioner, prepare to die. And it'll spawn a whole bunch of mages that struggle to attack through a small hallway and also a reaver. But if you throw a bunch of hammers through it, not much that can go wrong. Everyone's dead and everyone's happy. There's really no point in doing that, but you know, it's there. Why not enjoy it? So there's two walls here uh, that have lights <laughs> uh, that are different from the rest, obviously. Those are doors. Uh, this one leads to a presently dead end, but this one leads to some enemies. If you jump up here, it's going to start crushing you. Uh, it's going to be the same crusher that gets used over here, but this one guards a button. So we're going to jump up here, wait for a little bit for that crusher to go down. It only happens once, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Pushing that switch will open up this area. There is an afrit to your right. There is a whole bunch of stalkers in this room. Uh, there is also some water that's slowly pushing you backwards. And if you do happen to fall down, you'll take some damage. And then there's a button to go back up again. And this will keep the elevator in place forever. There's nothing down there. It's the same on the other side as well. Uh, so I'm not going to show off the other side because you get the idea, I hope. And if not, that'll be something for you to discover on your own. If you are really so curious, but I can promise you, not very exciting. We can move on to an afrit and another afrit. There's a cool cube here that you can walk around. We're just going to use some discs of repulsion next to it. Uh, make some interesting sounds inside the cube. We'll deal with that when we deal with it. For now, we're going to move on. There's some health pickups here that you can get if you want. Some stalkers just respawn, so that's fun. And there is a bunch of closed doors here. And there's going to be two switches on the end of this room. The left switch is going to make these things act as crushers. And kill most of this room without you having to deal with any of the Ettons that are hiding inside these blocks. You could also use some Discs of Repulsion if you want. But this is a pretty effective way of dealing with it. The other switch makes a lot of noise happen, but it also makes you be able to progress to the left. Uh, it also opens up the cube. Uh, the enemies are not going to go through here. You could just Chaos Device through this, honestly, but this it's not that bad. I don't think you take that much damage from the Crusher either, so you can more or less just walk forward. But from here, we can go on the bridge that was raised earlier with that clock here, press the button, and that will have opened the door that was at the start of the level that I showed off a little bit earlier. There we go. And that will allow you to get on with the level a little bit more. There is going to be a lot of Ettons in this room. We kind of looked into this room a little bit earlier as well. Uh, but... Overall, nothing too scary. It's only Ettons. They're just going to be using up your mana for a little while, but nothing that you can't handle. This room has a lot of pillars. Only one of them opens to reveal a porculator. All the other ones are just decorative. So we're just going to leave this room as quickly as possible. This is the room where we killed a mage earlier. There is also some quartz flasks up there. You can use this torch to get up there. It's very fiddly, <laughs> technically possible, and from here you can jump right there, and then you'll have access to a couple more quartz flasks. You could just fly to it later as well. But in order to get flight in this hub, you need to go into the secret level, and the secret level is uh, going to be more expensive than three quartz flasks, honestly, so, you know, it's a choice you can make. <laughs> it's up to you. I don't judge. 
But let's deal with all of the Reavers that have spawned from the wood. They have all died in this room and come back to haunt the wood. And let's actually just get this because we took a decent chunk of damage from those enemies. As I said, little fiddly, but it is still three quarts flask, so generally quite worth it because it's the only item I ever use. Now this room is interesting. Uh, <laughs> there is a pit down here. Uh, with a stalker at the bottom of it that you kind of jump on top of when you land down in it. With this a character you can just sort of swing. With the other characters it's a little bit more fiddly. But that button raises the bars that blocked us off earlier. And there's now two ways to get back to the start of the level. There is this wall that you can open for both an enemy that has probably respawned here. Because I think usually there isn't one. You can jump down here to get back to that sort of sewer section that we took to get the clock gear earlier. There is also this switch right here. And this button will open that door as well if you're on this side because it closes eventually. But over here there is a bunch of enemies. This is one of the more side areas uh, that we could look into from the room with all of the pillars inside it where we got the porculator earlier. You can kill these enemies earlier because of that, but... I didn't really feel like it, because it's a lot easier to do it from here. They're not very scary enemies. We can get our flechettes back, so that's nice. And just making sure that I did just about everything here. I think I did, so we're just going to take the teleporter. As you can see, the bars are now open. Uh, we can go over here to get this key piece, the sigil of the magus. And we are still missing six enemies, so I'm actually just gonna go... We are still missing 17 enemies, so we're just gonna go on a little adventure. I know there's at least a couple of stalkers alive, but... As I said, you don't really need flight to clear these levels for the most part. It doesn't really assist that much. The levels aren't that big. They're all pretty small levels, so... You might as well deal with it now. I don't fully recall where all the enemies respawn. I just know that I need to look for the stalkers and then... Uh, we'll deal with the rest as we come by. But first, there should be at least a stalker here. Uh, let's just jump down here to see if anything's here. And it does appear another stalker has respawned here as well. And I'm guessing that if I go... I guess I could check this out. Does anyone? Yeah, someone does respawn here. I have very little notes once again for this chapter because this one's just not that complicated if you know where to go. But it's mostly knowing where to go that's a little bit of an issue. <laughs> because it's certainly not always obvious. That enemy may seemed invisible, but I walked into him and that's really the only reason why I knew he was there. There we are. Now there can't be that much left. Uh, four enemies remaining. We can hopefully deal with that. Uh, it's just a matter of actually finding them, which can be a little difficult at times. I'm assuming... Oh, there's a whole bunch over here. That seems like four enemies to me. Very nice. And indeed, that is all of them. So we're just going to try to once again take the teleporter that was behind these bars and leave onwards to another kind of busy level. This, this one has a scary start, for sure. Uh, the water has a bunch of stalkers inside, so it's not a super reliable place to hang out. Uh, without taking a whole bunch of damage or you're getting blocked and then you'll get hit by a ton of projectiles. So, we're just going to be throwing hammers wildly as we're running past the edges of this level because there is a lot of lizards shooting at you all the time here. We can clear out this area a little bit and then we can more or less take our time with the rest because the lizards are more or less going to stay in place, which is fairly helpful. There we go. And now we can sort of more carefully deal with stuff. Watch out for enemies over here. There is a couple of horses that try to attack you through the window here. Very easy for them to accidentally get a shot off, even though their angle seems like they wouldn't. But they certainly are often capable of getting a hit in. And it can be quite scary. And it's also surprisingly easy to hit them with the axe, even though they seem too far away. I don't know. It's surprising to me every time, but it works every time as well. So I can't really complain too much. I think the stalkers may have died, which is also surprising. Just carefully dealing with the horses. They're all just sort of attacking the wall because these are very thin windows. It is awkward to try and attack through it for both of us, but I can promise you that these enemies are genuine problems at times. And I'm not... I really don't know why, because they have so much trouble 
actually trying to attack you. There is two knight's armors here that have enemies inside them. You can also attack next to the armors to hit the wall for some quartz flasks, which are very well hidden. You have to actually hit the wall, otherwise it doesn't work. And from here, there is a chain on the wall that you can lower as an elevator. Lowering it allows you to attack this enemy a little bit easier as well. And there is one on the other side as well, I do believe. And indeed there is. It's guarded quite well by those corpses. <laughs> but we managed to do it. And you can actually go down here for a whole secret path with a whole bunch of enemies inside it. This area is entirely optional. Which is nice, but it does have some neat consumables. First of all, there is a chain over here that you can open. With another chain that you can open. With another chain that you can open. With an icon of the defender behind it. You can open a lot of these places that have chains in them, so that's nice. Similarly, a little further up ahead, over here, some more chains. This one actually has some enemies behind it. Little bit of ammo as well, and this will lead to an amulet of warding along uh, with some more doors that you can open that don't really lead anywhere. There's a switch over there, we have to press that a little bit later. We'll get to that when we get to that. For now, let's move on back. I'm gonna try to do a jump, if it fails it doesn't matter, but there is some bracers there. Uh, with Bootsus' speed it's certainly a lot easier, but you can technically do this without them. Uh, if you fall down, you'll generally hit the floor. <laughs> but you can fall down here and then you'll be dead. Uh, so watch out for that, I suppose. In here, there is a lot of enemies once again. Uh, once again, our goal is to collect another clock gear in order to progress further into the level. In this level, you definitely don't need it, but to get to the secret level, you do need to actually get all four of them. Uh, which is the main reason why we're getting them, but you can use boots of speed and then you can just jump up there I'm actually not sure if you can do it without boots of speed, but you can Yeah, you get the idea. There's a platform there. There's going to be stairs later and that is why we're doing all of this So let's clear these efforts some more respawned, which is fine I'm not really concerned about any of the enemy respawns here, but I haven't really been hurt by this hub yet, I feel. <laughs> so we'll see if that becomes a problem later. First of all, uh, where are we going? We're going up here. To not press the button yet, we are going... Ooh, did I just get lost? It does happen occasionally. There is a... Switch here, there we go. <laughs> I know where I am, don't worry about it. There is a switch that we could see earlier from the little prison cells over here. When we press that, that will lower the beam. That allows you to press another button, which will then open a door, <laughs> which will then lead you to this room with the forge and the things and the stuff and a knight's armor that has some boots of speed inside it. There is a secret wall you can open here with the dragon for some more ammo. There's an effort there. This is a respawned enemy. There's not always one. And there is another clock gear for the purposes of continuing in the level. So, I'm gonna do this jump one more time. I wanna see if it, if it at least... It seems possible, but it is kind of a tricky jump even with boots of speed, I suppose. That's fair enough, that didn't work then. Anyway, let us go in here because we do have to leave the level to place that clock gear once again. Apparently a stalker has respawned, but that's fine. The Afrit managed to throw himself in front of the stalker while I was trying to kill him. Going in here, we are now on the left side of the main hub level. Put the clock gear in. A stair has been built on the Dark Watch. Guess what this level is called? Tis the Dark Watch. There is some boots of speed up there as well. You can go all around the wall to collect all sorts of goodies, but I don't really need them, so I'm not going to bother with it. Instead, we are going all the way back again to this newly formed staircase that we previously tried to jump to. There is a couple enemies here, and they are a little bit nasty for sure. It's a kind of a small room, and it does make life a little bit scary, but I am just using quartz flasks all over the place, because you do get a lot of them, and if you know where you're going, it's not that big of a deal. You can destroy this window in particular to actually continue. The rest just leaves outside. And we're just going to be smashing through a couple of efforts. 
mouse button held down and swinging wildly to press this button right here. And that button will open up a teleporter that is behind... I heard an effort there and that concerns me. It is behind this door right here. This one's a little bit guarded by a variety of horses. But slowly but surely we can deal with all of them. I'm hoping that these are the efforts I heard because there's one particular enemy respawn spot that's just awkward. Uh, it's in that sort of secret area and I don't really want to go all the way back there. So hopefully this deals with the remaining enemies. If not, that's fine, but we'll just have to backtrack a little bit. So let's go in here. We can grab this final key piece. We are missing one enemy. That's probably going to increase in a second, but hopefully we can most likely go back to that one secret area right here. It is a little fiddly that enemies respawn here because they don't wake up either, so you have to actually check it. But there you go. There is the final enemy dealt with. Hopefully no one else respawns. That would be lovely. And I'm actually just going to take the main entrance because there isn't really a reason not to. Because the main entrance teleporter and the sort of other teleporter, they both lead to the same place, so you might as well just take this door instead. Did I grab everything? I did. Okay. So, the final clock gear, you don't actually need it to complete the hub, because we have the three sort of key pieces already to finish the hub off. But there is a fourth clock gear that you can get in this sewer level. It's called uh, the Cloaca, <laughs> which I guess at some point was an app name for sewers. It is not the term that I would use for one, but, you know, it, it technically works, I suppose. There is a lot of stalkers hiding behind these grates, and they can shoot through those, so watch out for that. There's probably one still alive here. I'm assuming, but no one's attacking me, so maybe... I already... No? Yeah, there he is. Just wasn't feeling it. It's hard to tell when you've actually killed them, which also sucks, but there you go. <laughs> The best way to tell is when suddenly another fireball, but that seemed to have done it. Jumping down here, there is a torch. This level's dark. This level's real dark, and not in a morbid way, but more just in a it's very difficult to see anything kind of way. So hopefully that's not going to be too bad on the video. But if you're concerned, just know that I am currently in sewers for a while. Press the valve to raise the water. You can press it again from up here and you'll you'll break the level, so don't do that. Uh, you will actually just be unable to fully beat the level, I think, if you do it too much, so... Watch out with that. It's very easy to make that mistake, but... Only if you know how those mechanics work and you're, you happen to be running into the wall and... Uh, trying to press buttons that you can't presently see to look for secret areas or something like that. I believe there's one stalker that you can't quite hit with the axe, and I'm not sure if it's this one. It might be, actually, so we're just going to switch to the hammer for that one. And we're just going to wildly attack in that direction. Hopefully, I get bored after a while. Let's just assume that killed them, and if not, we'll see that later, I suppose. There is another area right there. It's blocked off. We'll get to that. For now, go through the teleporter, kill some more Ettons. Very, very dark. Just follow the road. There's really only one direction you can go into here, so at least there's that. Uh, is the clock gear here already, actually? It is. Nice. So we got that. Which is good. With that done, I'm just going to heal up, because why not? We can go back through here. This will take you back to the start of the level. And we can place the final clock gear in its place. When you say that, when you do that, it'll say four gears have been placed. And if you wait ten full seconds, it'll say some more. Which is... A barricade has opened on the cloaca. And uh, it won't say that if you don't wait for that message, it doesn't open. Uh, <laughs> so watch out for that. It opens this barricade to this door. Uh, this book, rather. The uh, whatever that's called. Which is necessary for the secret level. I think he died. Let's just hope he did. Uh, we can go... Oh, there's definitely one still alive somewhere. <laughs> Don't know if he respawned or not, but we'll see about that, I suppose. There is another place that opened, which is this one, which I pointed out earlier. 
hopefully we can get this one. Assuming there even is an enemy, it's honestly very difficult to tell. But there is another book right there. Now we have both books we can leave. There is still eight enemies alive. So we're just going to pull this to lower the water once again. Uh, there is another area that has opened now, which is this place. If you go forward in it, it'll start doing this. There is a switch here, which stops that from happening. The switch has a second purpose, which is not immediately obvious. But if you pull this and then run in here, you can see this raise. No missing textures or anything, but you can press this button to then lower the water once again so you're not stuck here. So that's nice. There is a couple of afrits here as well. Hopefully that's just the remaining enemies that we have to deal with. And indeed it is. And we're just going to walk back to the start. As I pointed out earlier, uh, you can press this switch from here and it'll raise the water even further than it's supposed to. There's still two enemies alive. I wonder if stalkers just respond. They might have actually. Uh, I'll just show off in an edit what it looks like when the level breaks because it is at least kind of interesting, but I don't want to risk it <laughs> because it's kind of annoying to try and fix that. Uh, and still try to get all the kills, so I'm just not going to. There's the last stalker, hopefully. There we go. 70 kills, let's leave. There is still one enemy we have to deal with, but we'll deal with that when we deal with it. I heard some enemies respawn here earlier, so we have to watch out for these puddles of water, because, again, if an enemy telefrags me, that's going to be a waste of, uh, I don't know, like 40 minutes or something like that, so that's not ideal. Uh, just trying to deal with these enemies from a distance. I think they always teleport in the middle of the pool. I haven't experimented that much with it. <laughs> because it's just kind of evil and I don't really want to deal with it. Anyway, we got those two books earlier. We can open these. You can open these from the start. But I waited. Uh, because there isn't that much to do here. If we put the book in its place right here. The first book. A whole bunch of walls will open up, a whole bunch of bookcases that all have little power-ups hidden behind them. Uh, so you can go inside here to get some quartz flasks and things. It also didn't open up a whole bunch of them. These you can open, most of them you can open from the get-go, others never open. But each of them has a horse behind it and some power-up that you can grab. It's the ones that have this face on it that open up manually. All the other ones don't have a face texture, the one that's at the top there. Uh, and then there's just one that doesn't open. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. It doesn't lead anywhere. There's just a wall behind it. So there's probably no reason for it to open at all. There we go. I think he died. Nice. That was the first part. Second part on the other side. Very similar looking room. Some more wizards waiting in a library with another place to place a book somewhere in here. There is a bookcase that has the old Korax books on them. Should have probably remembered where, but it doesn't matter too much. It doesn't take too long to find it. I also like to do this like a little bit later because it lowers all these bookcases. I mean, it just makes it a lot easier to move around when you're killing those horses, so it just makes life a little bit easier. Anyway, after doing that, it'll say the way back has opened. Uh, that is an indicator to say that the secret level is now also available for us. Uh, there's another quartz flask. There is another quartz flask. I'll take that, actually. Couple more horses still remain. There we go. And then... I think that's it. Right? Nope. <laughs> I was worried about... Did I really count to four? If I was in Dirty Harry, I would be in a lot of trouble, I feel. Anyway, uh, there's still a couple enemies alive. I will actually place these things right now, because this will open up the door to the end, and it'll give me a better idea of how many enemies are still actually left. It also lights up the room, which is nice. It makes it a little bit easier to see. There's still Netan alive somewhere as well, but he's teleporting around. <laughs> anyway, after placing that... Uh, there's a couple mages hidden behind this door that has now opened. This leads to the end. This leads to the final level of the hub, and I don't want to go there yet because we still have the secret level to deal with. There is one Etten alive, I guess. Can we find him? That's the question. 
There is a chance that he's up there somewhere, so I'll just actually deal with that later. This is the uh, starter level. This is the secret level right here. <sighs> it's interesting. Uh, there's one enemy type here. It's called the Wendigo. Uh, there is nothing else. Enemy respawns will all be Wendigos. This level is just a party of Wendigos. <laughs> the goal of this level is to press for switches. Uh which will open up a path to the middle of this level that you can see right there. And once you are in the middle, you can press a button to open up the bars that are currently blocking off a teleporter, which uh, I feel like I should have ran past by now, but it, indeed it's over there. Oh my god, I just took so much damage there. <laughs> Trying to sort of survive. There is some bars here. You cannot currently go through that teleporter to leave. You really do have to complete it properly. Uh, please don't kill me now, though. That would be unfortunate. And we're going to do it a little bit differently. There is uh, another purpose to that switch as well. Because there is a flight power-up in this level. Uh, it has the tag 1. Uh, the bars in front of the portal are also tagged as one. Uh, and if you press the button, it'll destroy everything with the tag one. So if you press the button before picking up flight, it's just gone. So that's not ideal. It's not technically necessary, but it is kind of a waste because flight is just nice to have in this level. Now one thing I'm going to do is look for a very specific spot here. Uh, I'll see it when I see it. It is right here. It's very close to the edge. Uh, we're gonna use our boots of speed. This is unnecessary, but it does make the life a little bit easier here. We're just gonna take this line up and jump to the other side. We're gonna grab the wings of wrath and we're gonna press this switch. So what this does is, first of all, these bars are now gone. We can actually just leave the level if we wanted to. Uh, enemies just respawn there. That's just a normal enemy respawn. But it also, it changes the bottom of this level a bit. Uh, usually, there is a lot of falling to your death going on at the bottom of this level. And that has been made a lot safer by pressing that switch. Also, again, if you did not grab those Wings of Wrath before pressing that button, they will be gone. As you can see, there's a couple enemies in the bottom trying to shoot me as well. I'll deal with that in a second. There is some ammo waiting down here as well, so I would actually like to go down there. There's a bunch of floors going up and down in this level. There's a lot going on. But for the most part, it is just Wendigo City all the time, and it's uh, it's miserable. <laughs> it's a miserable time. <laughs> I mean, it does fulfill the secret level credentials in that it's just wacky, but it, good god. It, <laughs> I did say they underused Wendigos in the original game, and in this game they decided to go all out with it. Uh, at least in the secret levels, I can kind of appreciate it, but good lord. There is so much, and they respawn fairly quickly as well. Anyway, let's just actually now do what the level wants us to do normally. I'm going to keep this flight active because, quite frankly, it's terrifying without it. Uh, just deal with this one first. There is four switches that we have to press. Uh, they're all behind doors, so as long as you just look for doors everywhere, then you should be able to find your way. This one has one door. It has a bunch of enemies behind it. They all managed to hit me right in the face and nearly killed me instantly. <laughs> no worries. There we go. Press the button behind it. Opens up a couple doors on the side here. And it also closes the door behind you, which is why I grabbed this sword, because this place can get a little nasty. But I think we're about good to go here. Very nice. Uh, going inside one of these rooms will also open up this door again. So if you're trapped in here, that's how you leave. Again, not immediately obvious, but you'll probably figure it out. You're smart, you'll get it. But in case you didn't, that's how you do it. That's nice. Further up ahead, there is another one of these little bunker areas. There is three of these little bunkers in total. Uh, and one of them has two doors, the other ones both have one. 
and it really is just a matter of trying to stay focused and not getting destroyed by Wendigos continuously. This one, there's still an enemy over here, yeah. But dealing with the enemies first, I don't want to get trapped. <laughs> this one has the two doors, as I mentioned earlier. There's a couple Wendigos that are currently awake here. They have respawned. Usually there's a bunch of Wendigos in this room. They're just sort of looking the other way. There's a weird moving wall going on that's killing the Wendigos that are on the side, as you can see. Trying to deal damage, kind of failing. If you press the switch, the Wendigos in the middle will wake up and try to kill you. And you'll just have to deal with them like this. You can get in this middle area as well. I think you can just go in between the pillars for a Dark Servant. And we can leave, so no worries there. There is another door here, as I said earlier, and I'm struggling to find it right now. Also, my mouse pad is nearly falling off the table, which is exciting. Irrelevant to anyone watching this. I don't even know how that would happen, but fair enough. Uh, slowly go downstairs. Fighting on stairs is basically the worst, so this is no exception. It does get kind of dark in here. We're not going to use a torch because there is a mechanic related to the darkness, so we'll show that off in just a second. Oh, God, what a level. So there's a light part and a dark part here. Uh, once we press the switch, if we touch the light part, it disappears and you'll fall down. So watch out for that. If you have flight, you can just fly away. If you have a chaos device, you can just teleport out again. But if you don't have either of those, you are going to die. So watch out for that. I will really just mostly attack there to wake everyone up and to figure out where enemies were. <laughs> I'm just using echolocation for this level for the most part. Enemies also do respawn in that bottom area as well, which is terrifying. Uh, as you can see from all the danger. But there is still one more bunker. Now it's the one right here. There should be one more switch to press to sort of complete this level. I will grab every single pickup here as well, just because it's useful. Oh, uh, and then just spam them as hard as I can, because they are shooting so wildly on this difficulty, unfortunately. And just continuously. But again, flight is very useful to have during this. Because it means you don't fall down while trying to get through this alive. One more door. The final room here. This one's mean. Uh, we'll just deal with the enemies first. But once we're done with that, there is a bunch of ammo here. If we press this switch, we're going to walk next to it immediately afterwards. Because immediately crushers go down and the entire room terraforms. And there is uh, a little bit of danger. There's a couple of holes here which lead very far down and kill you. Uh, everything else doesn't really matter too much, but as long as you know where to stand after pressing the button, you might not die, so it's a pretty good deal. Having done that, it creates a bridge to that central platform, and that is how you are usually supposed to finish this level. Um by using that bridge to get to the center and then pressing the button at the very end. But you can probably imagine how it's a little bit easier to do it a little out of order. Ooh, cool. That was very scary when he teleported next to me. <laughs> anyway, there's still a couple things here to do. There is two areas on the side that we haven't really explored yet, and you do need flight to properly explore those without dying. But they lead to a bunch of extra power-ups here. A lot of quartz flasks waiting for us, fortunately, because I used a lot of them. <laughs> but we can more or less rejuvenate most of them over here, which is nice. There's also an icon of the defender. And similarly, on the other side right here, there is some more enemies waiting for us. There is a little bit less useful pickups, but still some enemies to destroy. I think they respawn here as well, which is great. And some more enemies on the side here as well. Hiding behind the wall. But a few more quartz flasks, a little bit of armor. We got like max armor almost, so that's an unusual experience for sure. And now we just have to deal with the remaining enemies before we leave this place once and for all. The fact that this happened in one attempt is surprising, but we're not done yet. There's still a lot of Wendigos and they do respawn. Seemingly fairly quickly. It's uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of Wendigos. It's really, it's it's a lot. There's a lot of Wendigos going on. I do not care for it. There is at least a lot of ammo over here as well. A lot of combined mana, so you at least have some options, but... It's just so many Wendigos. I, I think they don't 
respawn anywhere outside, like in like a room at least. And I hope that's actually a true statement, because actually that's a lie. I know they respawn in that one room with the moving platform, so hopefully they didn't. Uh, because otherwise, I don't know where it is. I'll be honest, I do not know where anything is in this level. It's a big circle with a lot going on. <laughs> so hopefully we can just get away with this. But there is a chance we're going to be missing some enemies here in a second. How are we doing? No, nope, we did it all. Everyone's dead. So with... That's so sad. <laughs> Hopefully it's just the ones here in the middle. If not, that's okay, but I'd love to get out of here. Come on. How are we doing? We're missing no enemies. Wow, that's actually really lucky. <laughs> we can just leave once we find the portal. There we go. Very nice. So with flight, we have a few more things to look at. There's at least one more Etten somewhere. And truth be told, I do not know where he is, so hopefully... No, there's some more Ettons now. Uh, since we are on the, uh, I think, right side, yeah, we can actually real quickly enter this level right here, the first one we entered earlier. As I said previously, there's one spot right up here where enemies will respawn. There's an icon of the Defender, and uh, you, I think you can only reach this with flight, so there you go. A little bit extra. That's the last enemy in this level as well, so that's wonderful. Now we just have to deal with the remaining enemies over here, and then we just have the last part to go. So we're almost done here. Just gotta not get telefragged. <laughs> it's the only thing we gotta do. It sounds easier than it is, but as long as we just sort of hang out over here. Enemies should just walk to me, and we shouldn't be in danger. I don't really want to use ammo that much, though. Uh, we're missing two enemies right now. I know one of them was teleporting around. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. It's really nice. I just really enjoy this place a lot. Because <laughs> even the enemies get lost, you know? Like, no one knows what's going on here. One enemy. I'm not hearing it either, which concerns me. Which also makes me think, actually. Maybe they're in the library. Or maybe they're just up here. They're up here. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna take some combined mana. Get filled up entirely. Uh, we have indeed killed all the enemies and we're going to the final part of the hub. There is three stained glass windows, a bunch of lava, and we're just going to fly along the edge here. Uh, and in a second, enemies will spawn. A lot of shielded horses all shooting at us, but as long as we sort of stick to the walls here and just throw our hammers out, we should be pretty much good here. Flight's just really nice here because you don't get blocked by all the enemies. Uh, and that's obviously just really nice. The lava does hurt you, so watch out for that. And as long as we just go in circles like this, there is nothing to worry about. Uh, there is uh, going to be three waves of this. The stained glass windows cannot be destroyed by attacking them, unfortunately. But after doing the first wave, it spawns a bunch of items, but then also another wave of enemies. A bunch of quartz flasks for now, so that's nice. Uh, I'm using up just green mana right now. I'm not particularly concerned. We do have a whole bunch of craters of might as well, if need be. But after the second wave, it is going to spawn some mana as well. So I'm not overly concerned. I might use blue mana just a little bit here near the end. Just get a couple hits in, but overall it's probably going to be okay. There we go. Surprisingly tanky, that last one. But that last wave, indeed, there is some green mana now here. This one, I want to make sure that I am in a sort of particular spot as we kill the last one, uh, because there is some stuff to talk about here after we have dealt with these enemies. Trying to grab the mana. Love it. Everything hurts here. <laughs> Everything hurts a lot, so just be a little careful, but slowly but surely does the job. It can't really go anywhere. Enemies, enemies don't respawn in this level either, like, uh, like regular enemy respawns. So that's at least nice. Uh, let's get some mana here. 
At least a green variety is something I would like to get refilled. We're just going to ignore this final horse. And one enemy type that we haven't seen yet uh, is the... Um, the Death Kings themselves, I suppose. There is one of each class under stained glass window. We have seen them in the original Hexen as well. But interestingly, when you fight the fighter in the original Hexen, you are kind of in a cramped spot. You don't have flight. You um, kind of just have to make sure you know what you're dealing with. But because we have flight here, you get into an interesting situation where this enemy cannot actually aim up. Uh, so as long as you don't look down, <laughs> because if you look down, you'll also fly down and you'll just fly into his projectiles. As long as you don't look down and you don't get near a wall, because his projectiles do deal splash damage, you can just casually, slowly axe him until he's gone. And that is exactly how we're dealing with part one of this. <laughs> because quite frankly, it's terrifying and I don't want to deal with it. We can also use the hammer as well. Nice and easy. He burns down. And we get to the second wave of enemies in a second here. Uh, similar to the first one, this time it's going to be a bunch of wizards instead of horses. Um, but the next two waves are just going to be wizards. We're just going to be throwing some more hammers out. No real concerns. I will once again want to be standing in a specific spot for the end of the second wave here as well. Uh, because there's some more fun stuff that we can do and I do enjoy me some fun stuff. So we'll deal with that in just a moment. First, we're just dealing with these remaining wizards. There is going to be one more wave after this. It does spawn a little bit more mana as you are progressing through this as well. So you don't even need to use those uh, craters of might. Third wave spawns some more uh, quartz flasks, so that's good as well. And just like the previous wave, I want to make sure I am out of the enemy's vision once this last one dies. Another stained glass window gets destroyed. Now, an interesting thing about Hexen uh, is there's two ways to deal with a script that is executed by killing an enemy, which is you either kill him uh, or you use a banishment device, which teleports them to just a, a spawn spot. So what we're going to do... Uh, is we're going to show off what it's like to be the cleric for a moment by using an icon in the defender and then using the banishment device on the cleric. And you'll get an idea... There we go. Uh, what it's like to have the strongest weapon of the cleric. You're going to see a lot of ghosts. Uh, I will be keeping that icon of the defender selected because these ghosts will just ravage me. But uh, I'm not even going to attack, actually. We're just going to let these ghosts fly around here in this enemy that's this this arena entirely filled with reavers and you'll have sort of an idea what it's like <laughs> to have just a normal cleric playthrough because this is what it's like you shoot once you get a bunch of ghosts and it kills just everything and then after the third wave a wizard is going to spawn out of here he has the third weapon of the wizard he pretty much insta-killed the cleric there, which is interesting. That usually doesn't happen. Uh, but we can use some discs of repulsion, maybe. Can we knock him back to him? I'm a little bit concerned, actually, because usually the cleric just lives. Uh, and they both sort of kill each other. But, you know, I still had icons of the defender left. It's fine. But, yeah, it's, it's an unusual fight for sure. Once you deal with that mage, uh, you can leave. You can also use the banishment device on the mage and then you'll be able to leave as well. It'll say the path is open. But that's that. That is the end of hub number three and also the game. Once again, you find yourself in the great hall of the Chaos Sphere. As if no time had passed from when last you moved among these shadows. But something is eerily different. A silence where once had been soft whispers. A sense of being watched by hidden eyes. Eyes which shield a malefic intent. And I think I have to press a button here. Once before you grasped the Chaos Sphere, held it within trembling hands. Now your hands tremble with something more than avarice and dread meshes with the 
hunger for power. I thought it said burger. If even the power of the sphere is not enough to protect you from the forces of darkness, perhaps it is better left untouched, its promise left unkept. But then you never were one to back down from a challenge. And finally, same image as uh, the end of the original Hexen. And other players await. I think if you beat the game with the cleric or the mage, you get a different picture here as well. I haven't actually verified it. But that is the end of the Death Kings of the Dark Citadel. Uh, third hub, definitely the shortest one of all of them, but I like it. The secret level is wild, but all in all, I think it's fun. Uh, the puzzles are... They could be a little out there, but I, we, we were never really stuck on this hub in particular, as long as you just know how to press buttons. Uh, the only thing we did do was accidentally mess with the sewers enough to get stuck uh, in that room. But fortunately, it didn't end up hindering us, as, especially since that level is optional anyway. So at least it's not as bad <laughs> in this one, but it can certainly go a little wrong. But yeah, all in all, I, I like this, but it's certainly... <laughs> <laughs> it's not for everyone. The, the enemy respawns in this are ludicrous, especially in multiplayer, but in single player, if you're not used to it, it's it can get really overwhelming if you're particularly unlucky. Uh, but for a second playthrough, it's actually really fun because there is uh, the levels are all just pretty fun. They're a little bit more difficult than the original Hexen as well. And yeah, it's just a fun challenge. So I, I like it, but... My first experience was very different. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's just the way it is. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Uh, that is the end of Hexen for me, I think. I don't know if I'm going to get around to Hexen 2 at some point. But if I do, you'll see it. And if I don't, then you won't. But either way, hope you all enjoyed it. That was the end of this. Next time, we'll be playing a different game. And I hope to see you all there. Bye-bye. <laughs>